Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, this weekend, well, first of all, let me get for this weekend. Let me tell you where I am. I am at Primeville Reservoir, one of my favorite places to go camping. I just got done with the Oregon Star Party and come here with my sister, Marianne. We meet up and then we, for me, I dust off and take a shower and get some water. And that leads me to an interesting thing. Look at there's water here. A year ago, I, I actually gave a talk about this very place, about the coming subject for the weekend, and that there's no water here. It was just a stream, but now, now there's the water, this lake is full. It's like near 90%. What has happened? Well, we've all heard this. I mean, Lake Shasta is the same thing, almost bare bones and something major happened. Of course, this last winter, uh, a lot of snow, a lot of rain, which then allowed for a big snowpack. And same thing here. This was really late. All other ones were uh, filling up. Pineville Reservoir took a long time to actually to fill up, but it did, boy, in a big, big way. So I'm very happy to see see this. It gives me life and, and joy because I love to paddle around on this lake. Uh, again, for lots of reasons. I know I grew up as a kid coming here with my family, and it was just, it's just a joy. Now, this weekend, we are going to celebrate the Transfiguration of the Lord. And in that, we hear about Jesus taking James, John, uh, Peter, James, and John up the mountain so that they could witness what was about to happen. What was about to happen? Well, Jesus was transfigured. He turned dazzling white that like no one could ever imagine. A, 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 an event that was unprecedented. And along with him wasn't just Jesus, next to Jesus, while the apostles were watching on, was Moses and Elijah. Moses and Elijah represent the law and the prophets. We ourselves are being called to recognize that while Jesus was changed in his transfiguration, we have hope to follow. That means this life is not all there is. The church shares with us that this event occurred just prior to the most difficult times for Jesus and for the apostles. That is Jesus arrest, his being scourged, his being crucified and dying, what would appear to be a shameful death. But we know that three days later he rose from the dead, right? We know this. This is what our faith has shared with us. This is what the apostles have testified uh, to. And it is the church that is giving this to remind us this very thing. Peter, James, and John were about to have a very difficult time because it was clear Peter didn't want Jesus to go to Jerusalem. And that's where Jesus was about to go. Why? Because he didn't want him to suffer. And yet suffering is part of life. It's not the sum of life. In fact, the ultimate goal of life is to become saints so that we may be able to be alive forever in heaven with our Lord, our family members, all of the people that we love, um, and with the angels. It's going to be awesome. Behind me, if I can get this kayak turned a bit here, behind me you're going to see something that I have not been able to be part of for a long time. This right here, this area right here, there's water going through this because over here is an island. This island has been actually not an island because that was a land bridge when there was hardly any water, even just water being, water being low here. And now it is a passage. In the church tradition, we have this idea of being able to, uh, as, as Christians, to be on a pilgrimage. And sometimes the church will have these, like, what we call holy years or times of jubilation, uh, jubilee years, or, or even just uh, the church will offer um, special times of pilgrimage. During those times, what is offered is sometimes a holy door, a passage by which people can walk through as part of a, uh, a spiritual spiritual journey so 
But for example, Mount Angel Abbey uh, was a holy space. The cathedral was a holy space where they decorated a door. Uh, parishes were encouraged as well to have holy doors during these times. Now, what's the idea here? What's the theology? That as we pass through these doors, as we pass through these doors, we are called to be reminded that Jesus is the door. He is the gatekeeper. He is the shepherd. He is our Lord. And it's through him, right? Through him that we find salvation, that we find fulfillment and we find joy. Well, I'm going to go through this passage right here, right there, right there. <clears throat> and for me, it's kind of like a sacramental. Well, it's not a door. It's certainly a passage that I have not been able to go by or go through for many, many years. And I'm excited to do that. I want you to come along with me. Think about what things are in your way that you need or I need to change. What is God calling us to do to change our lives? That is, what's in the way in our lives to let Jesus in? To finally, whatever that brokenness is that you may have, that I might have, that unforgiveness, that that gift that we've been suppressing. Last time I mentioned last week, uh, taking a gift and burying it, but then keeping it buried. God wants to transform this world, really, in his name and in the spirit of his kingdom, to bring the kingdom present here while we are here. So as I pass through this, think about this. As you then come to church this weekend, we have doors, right? Every church has doors. Ponder on this as you walk through the doors. You're not just walking through regular doors because this is not just a regular building. Our church, Holy Trinity, in any Catholic church, is holy ground. And in that holy ground, we pass through doors from our parking lot, or if you walked off your bike, if you drove out of your car, and that we pass through those doors. We have people there to welcome us very purposely because we want everyone to know that they are loved, they are welcomed, and yet we're also all challenged to be changed in the image and the likeness of God that he has created us to be from the beginning. That means we may need to take a look at a lot of stuff. So this weekend we're going to hear the scriptures proclaimed and of course the Eucharist given to us. These are opportunities, word and sacrament, to allow God's grace to penetrate our hearts. So listen to the scriptures. You may not even want to re pre-read them before you come. And then when you receive the Eucharist, remember who he is. This is a time of worship and devotion, not just hospitality. Now we move from hospitality from the front of the doors to now worship. This is our primary worship is the adoration of the Lord, but not just adoration, something even greater that is partaking in him, receiving him into our bodies. He is his precious body, blood, soul, and divinity, all of that in the Eucharist, present when the minister says the body of Christ. What an amazing thing, what a gift we've got. Allow God to change you so that whatever passage you need to go through, know that he is with you. This Eucharist is his way of accompanying us. He is with us through all these things. And when you need to then go through that passage, like I'm gonna go through this passage, it may seem small. He will help you to walk through that passage, no matter how difficult, no matter how scary, no matter how deep or shallow the water is, you could say. I'll see you this weekend. It's good to be back, of course. I got lots of stories to tell from my camping trips that I'll probably filter into the homilies in the coming weeks. God bless you, everyone. And I'll see you this weekend. Bye-bye. What a beautiful lake, huh? Rock formations. There's that island. And here's that passage. Let's go. Let's do this. Praise God. Maybe as I'm paddling, you might think about 
what it is. If it's in your way, the passage you may be afraid to go through so that you may be transfigured, you may be changed into more of a saint that you're being called to be, to be the Christian, the Catholic Christian that God has called you to be, and how you might live that out in the parish and in your life in general. I'm gonna be quiet now as we ponder on this and paddle together. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for the life that you give us. Thank you, God, for giving me this opportunity to be on vacation, protecting me and being with me. Plus all those who are watching or listening, whatever the struggles they may have now that they may have, please, Lord, help them. Let them know that you are with them and be beside them. You are our way. You are the way. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to us in human form, for suffering, dying, and rising to crush death and to give us life. What a gift. Help us, Lord, to appreciate that gift. Give us the strength that we need to walk through the passages, the narrow way that you're calling us to. And then help us to be open to the grace of your love so you may transfigure us, that you may change us in this life from the inside out so that we may be the faithful disciples you've called us to be. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. Take care of everything. <laughs>